Hello everyone, once again this is G, and today I want to talk about how to handle extremely high pressures in chambers and be able to detect if it's over a certain pressure. And then if you detect that, you can then take action of some kind using automation. And normally, you know, if we go to an Atmos sensor, you look at it, it's like over 20 kilos. That's it. Anything beyond that, you can't really tell. And so a lot of the times it's just not good enough because here we have 400 kilos per tile or you can have more and so the atmosphere sensor is just not very useful for that so we need something a little bit better let's say i wanted to maintain a maximum pressure in this chamber of well, let's say 800 kilos now currently it's well below that and so these pumps are continuing to run and they're just using this liquid layer and then the gas continues to over pressurize in here but if we increase the gas pressure in here, as we'll do in just a second, I'm going to set this to 800 kilos per tile. There we go. You can see it's 800 kilos. And again, the pumps are still running. Nothing particularly interesting is happening. But now, gas over pressure, the pumps have stopped. And then you can see here this tripped over a thousand kilos. And that's what caused it to stop. But if you wait a little bit, now it's going to go back down here. So overall, the chamber is below a thousand kilos. However, we we really don't want it to go over a thousand kilos. We want to keep the chamber at around, you know, 800, 850, because what that lets us do is if we wanted to have other liquid vents in here, they can still operate. Let's say you put a liquid vent up here. I'll show you. And again, if we speed this up, See, nothing happens here. This one trips. Now, let me explain to you how this works exactly. So if we go to plumbing, you'll see here, we just got a little bit of a recirculator here. Now, ordinarily, we can also top this up with another pipe, like that. But there was quite a bit of water in here, and this is set to 0.1 grams, so even if you don't have a recirculator, it's no big deal. But anyways, going back to plumbing, we got a recirculator and then you can always top it up with a little bit more water if you wanted to or you can use a different liquid doesn't matter but then what you do is you have a liquid sensor here and we have it set to water and so this liquid sensor will only trip if this vent can't handle the water coming out if it trips on being over pressured like it is now then water will proceed across this liquid sensor and the liquid sensor will it trip this buffer, which I have it set to 30 seconds in this case. And this buffer will continue to stay on. And then from there you can trip whatever you want. So in this case it trips an alarm and then it has a not gate. So essentially this vent will go to closed for as long as the buffer is on. And the reason you want a buffer is that this doesn't run constantly. Like this doesn't trip all the time. It only trips every so often. So it's not a real time gauge. It's kind of a sample or polling kind of a gauge, but it works. And then we have this door mechanism over here. First of all, we're using the weight plate to check if the door is closed or open. If the door is closed, the, the door then presents a uh, kind of a solid weight onto the plate, and then the plate knows the door is closed. And then, of course, if the door is open, the plate is set to false. And then how this works is we have a filter, which is set to 10 seconds, and a buffer, again, 10 seconds. And so the idea here is the seconds behind this are for the um, kind of the, the rate at which the water can either get up to the style or come back down. And so we want to make sure that we don't uh, recycle this um, polling system too soon because the water is not in, you know instantly moving up and down. It takes a little bit of time for it to get up and down. But you could set these to longer than 10 seconds. I'd say 10 seconds would be minimum. But you could set it to much longer, and then you can also set this buffer to longer, and then the polling just won't be as frequent. But I would say 10 seconds is as frequent as it can possibly be. But yeah, and this works for any gas. And of course, if you wanted to add more gas in here, it's not a problem. Again, we're just going to go ahead and set this to, let's say, 500 kilos per tile. It should be fine. Just speed this up. And we wait a little bit. There we go. Buffer expired. 
this didn't detect over pressure and it's fine now one thing I want to show you is specifically the behavior of gas in here I'm gonna bring a little overlay there we go okay so the idea here is we've got temporarily gas is at a higher pressure in this tile but very briefly and then after that it proceeds up and so if it's over a thousand kilos it's only for a particular period of time and after that it just kind of equalizes so you put the essentially the detection vent as close to the action as possible so one tile away from water and what you want to do is make sure to avoid having the liquid cover the vent also I've added some bunker tiles in here just because the pressure jumps up very quickly and it can cause regular tiles to break but you can just add more tiles on the sides and that'll be fine there we go once again, we got gas over pressure. At any rate, this is all I got for you right now, but I'm working on the next video where I'll show you where we're gonna use this mechanism and that's coming out very shortly. In the meantime, what you can do is subscribe if you haven't already and hit the like button because every little bit helps and I really appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.